Welcome back to the channel guys. Apple recently just finished their 2022 WWDC, their worldwide de world worldwide worldwide developers conference. <laughs> All right, so Apple has either updated or created a bunch of new features to be released with Watch OS 9 set to be released later this year in the fall of 2022. The first of these updates is for the Apple Watch faces. Two of them we are already familiar with. That is the Lunar Watch Face and the Astronomy Watch Face. For the Lunar Watch Face, the Moon, this one is going to show the relationship between the Georgian calendar, the typical calendar, and the lunar calendar, which a lot of different cultures around the world use. The second one is the astronomy watch face and this is going to show live cloud data around the world as you look at the watch face so that's kind of cool the second update for watch os 9 is for the workout app specifically for running they are adding in three new metrics to help with the accuracy that you have for your running metrics and this is going to help you understand your performance with running a little bit better for all of you runners out there i'm a little bit of a runner sometimes sometimes. Now the next couple features that I'm going to list off for you for the watch OS nine update are health related. If some of you are not aware, I am a nurse here in Canada. I like to talk about health. I've done a couple different videos on the Apple watch series six, different health features related into that. So if you'd like to check out those videos, I will link them above. I will also link them below. The first thing that I'd like to talk about is sleep stages. Apple already has right now the sleep app where you can monitor your sleep. You can see how long you were in bed for and how long you actually sleep slept for. It'll show you different periods of the night where you might have woke up or your sleep might have been interrupted or disrupted, but it doesn't give you that much detail. Enough detail, but it could be better. And then can also be further tracked a little bit more accurately with your watch. What the Apple Watch does is uses the accelerometer within the watch paired with the heart rate monitor to kind of give a better metric of how your sleep is going. So what they're doing with these features rolling out is to show you which stage of sleep you're in. Now I'm going to list a very quick and valuable resource below on sleep. This is from Dr. Matthew Walker. He is like Dr. Sleep. He has published many research journals on sleep. He's got master classes. He's got TED Talks, he's got videos on YouTube. So he is a wealth of knowledge when it comes to sleep. I will list all of his links below if you have questions on sleep. Sleep can be divided into two main categories. We have REM sleep and we have non-REM sleep. Non-REM sleep can be further categorized into four separate stages. So in stages one through four, it kind of goes into how deep your sleep is. So in your first stage, you have your awake slash light sleep. Your second stage is going to be your light sleep. And then your third and fourth stages are your deep sleep. This is where we want you to be sleeping because this is where you're actually being rested. So what Apple is hoping to do with sleep stages is to see how long you were sleeping for, when you went into each stage of sleep, and then when you woke up. They're also doing something where you're able to take part in a very large research study of sleep. This will probably be one of the largest sleep studies in the world if they get enough people. This is on a voluntary basis. Anyways, I won't nerd out on that too much. I'm sure there's a bunch of privacy concerns that come with that as well and that will need to be addressed it hasn't already the next feature that is being updated is afib history afib stands for atrial fibrillation which means that the atria of your heart the two chambers on top are not contracting properly again this is a topic that i have kind of already touched on in a previous video when apple released the ecg monitoring on the apple watch series 6 but with the afib history it's looking to see how long you spent in afib a certain time of day and you're also able to to print out all of these metrics into a PDF to share it with your family doctor. I will mention again in this video that this is just an additional tool to use in discussion with your healthcare provider. It is not a diagnostic tool. If you are someone who suffers from any type of cardiac problems, I would love to just emphasize here is that it is not currently FDA cleared. It is pending FDA clearance as of the time of this video being filmed. Apple says their FDA clearance is soon. I don't know what soon means. The last feature that I want to talk about is one that is actually kind of interesting to me. It is going to be a medications app or feature that is released in conjunction with the watch OS nine. Basically what the premise of the medications feature is supposed to be is that you're going to be able to track and manage your medications that you take. You're also going to be able to track any vitamins or supplements that you're taking. I think this feature is going to be so great once it is rolled out and it's going to serve a wide variety of people to be able to help manage their scheduled medications 
to be able to help identify their medications. There's two different ways that you're going to be able to search for drug names within the app. It's unclear right now if they're going to be using brand name or generic names. I hope that they're going to be using a mix of both because some people just know one and not the other. So for example, we have sertraline and Zoloft. That is the same medication, but some people might know it as one or the other. The second way that you'll be able to look up medication is to take out your phone and scan it with the camera. You'll be able to hold your phone over the medication bottle and a live text situation will kind of pop up where you'll be able to get the words off your medication prescription and it'll just uh, auto populate on your phone. I am interested to see kind of the safety mechanisms they'll have in place for ensuring that people are picking the right medication. While it is wonderful that you're going to be able to choose from a list of medications and match them up to ones that you have prescribed, there is a big difference between diphenhydramine and dimenhydronate. Those are two different medications. One is Benadryl, one is gravel. And so if you're picking the wrong one, then that can lead to some issues. And so, you know, that is a very easy mix that even people in the hospital can mix up day to day. And and so we have different safety mechanisms in place to ensure that we don't, as healthcare providers, make those mistakes. Uh, something simple like tall man lettering is used, where we might have certain letters out of the drug that are capitalized so you're able to identify that certain drug um, in comparison to another one. They are going to be working with a company called Elsevier. Elsevier is a publication company for a lot of medical books. I have a bunch of them in here from my own nursing program so I can say that it is a trusted and valuable resource that can be used. The other thing they're hoping to do with this app is to see drug to drug interactions. Again they will be using Elsevier for help on this. Um, this one I have like mixed feelings about. I think it's great to see that they're including a feature where you can see drug to drug interactions where it can maybe raise a conversation with your healthcare provider. The kind of issue that I take with this one feature is I don't want people to think that you're going to be able to depend on an app to give you a true depiction of drug to drug interactions. This is truly something that should be done by the prescriber or prescribers working in conjunction with each other. No prescriber should be giving you a medication that is directly contraindicated to each other. And what I mean by that is maybe medication A that you're taking is not suitable to be taken with medication B. They are completely contraindicated to each other and they will have side effects on your body. And so what Apple's hoping to do is basically that if you're putting in more than one medication that it will alert you to say these are contraindicated. Again, I truly hope that you are not relying on an app to tell you this. It should be up to your healthcare provider. It should be up to the prescriber or prescribers to ensure these kind of mistakes are not happening. But it will be interesting to see with their classification of critical, serious, or moderate interactions, how that plays out. And I hope it does strike some conversation with healthcare providers and their patients. I just hope it, you know, gives some health education and, and a teaching point for some people. Another great thing as well that is included with these drug to drug interactions is that it will show you contraindications um, such as alcohol for example. Spoiler alert, a lot of med medications don't go well with alcohol so <laughs> it'll give you a little notification saying hey don't take this with alcohol, don't drink this with grapefruit juice. But I hope that it, people are not relying on these features as kind of a, an education supplement as opposed to talking to their actual healthcare provider. Always talk to your healthcare provider. I'm gonna get off my soapbox about that. I find this to be a huge help for anyone who is on a specific medication regimen, who is maybe taking scheduled medications at a certain time of day. Even if you're taking something as simple as oral birth control, that is a medication that actually should be taken at relatively the same time every single day. And so if you're able to just have one extra reminder on your phone that's maybe not on the calendar app or not on the reminders app, that's great for, you know, preventative measures. <laughs> And then the last thing that they're rolling out, I wouldn't necessarily say this is a feature, but they are saying that they're going to periodically remind people of the health information that they are sharing with different apps and providers. Again, not sure how exactly this is going to be rolled out, so it'll be interesting to see later on, but that is just something I thought I would share with you. If any of you are interested in seeing a little bit more of an in-depth review or having a conversation about the health app on the iPhone, I would be more than happy to do a video about the, on that. I have actually been thinking about doing that for quite some time now. So give a thumbs up if you're interested in seeing something like that. And if not, that is the end of this video. I also just filmed a video of the iOS 16 highlights from the WWDC 2022. So if you haven't seen that, go ahead and check that out. I will link it above here. I'll link it at the end of the video. Thank you guys so much for watching to the end of this video, and I will see you guys in the next one.
Bye. <laughs> so like live clouds circling the earth. I don't even know how to describe that. Brain's not computing right now. Um, 